and thanks for coming to the podcast thank you so much pavan ji it's my pleasure completely to be here and uh, to learn from you and i think that comes primarily from the western concept of science and faith in ayurveda you know they say that there is not a single plant which is not of use ah. not a single plant animal or mineral in this world which is not of use so i think pavan ji rather you know and faith and science are considered two opposites scientists are doing investigations day in day out and then they are arriving at something which is very similar to what the rishis had written down in the scriptures thousands of years ago a uh, half of brahma's life is already over 50 years have already gone and this is the first day of his 51st year so about 155 trillion human years have gone by he appeared in the 19th mahayuga but he still chiranjeevi he still he still even here. now he'll be yes, there yes 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 because he has a role to play in the yeah. life of kalki kalki yeah i like this uh, director called christopher nolan who actually dharmified the science <laughs> and his movie tenet major problems that the world is facing is because people are not open minded okay now the new generations talk about having a sustainable future equality you know etc etc all these principles are already there in our scriptures veda vyasa comes today <laughs> he'll be asked to write mahabharata in 30 seconds <laughs> right i don't have time to listen <laughs> don't make fun of it mm-hmm. you can make it fun but you answered me very important <laughs>
I I um, absolutely adore Adi Shankaracharya, uh, you know, for what he did in his short uh, age. But I think he brought forth the essence of Hinduism in in the terms of Vedanta. And I don't know how many people uh, watching would be aware of Vedanta, but I would urge them to check it out. You know what Vedanta is all about. But the philosophy I would say is a means to approach God. That is the first thing that we have to understand. And since Upanishads cover these, uh, various Upanishads can give you different kinds of views that used to exist in that time period. Right. There are some that believe, and another beautiful thought that developed through this philosophy was the concept of monism. Okay. So, you know, we talk about polytheism, Hinduism being a polytheistic religion, which is the biggest mistake <laughs> that people make. Yes. And we talk about monotheistic religions, the Western religions, etc. Hinduism is inherently monotheistic. So monotheism means there is only one God. And our Vedas continuously talk about all of them being different forms of the same supreme being. The Upanishads talk about, you know, the 33 gods that the Brihadaranyak Upanishad Correct. again talks about. And uh, Yagnya Valkya says that, you know, they are a form, they are manifestations of that one Brahman, right? So we are multiple times told that there is no polytheism. It is one God who right. is manifesting in different forms, which is a very radical concept compared to the Western religions where there's only one God, one form. Mm, yeah. We have multiple forms of the same being, same being because the same being performs various functions. For each function, you have to dress up differently. You have to talk differently. You have to behave differently. You have to use different uh, armaments. Right, so your tools will be different, and that's the reason God exists in so many forms. And this concept of philosophy and leading to a good life, in another way, it was also a search for finding who are we. Hmm. The first quest was who's the creator, right? Where did we come from, you know? And then, when that question was solved, that there is one Para Brahma, you know, who exists in various forms. The second quest is, who are we? Who am I? Hmm. All the existential questions about soul, the concept of Atman, of Brahman, all these come from the Upanishads. So Upanishads are the texts that give us the basics of our beliefs. You know, not the stories, but the basic concepts, foundation. Understood. The cycle of karma, the samsara cycle, all these come from the Upanishads. And the uh, summary of all the Upanishads is the Bhagavad Gita. Beautiful. So Bhagavad Gita, if a person reads, I would say with an open mind, you know, understanding what it is trying to say. Don't read it as a story. Oh, okay. So Krishna told Arjun this, you know, just to motivate him. Or maybe, you know, there's a lot of people who've kind of, they use it to put into, uh, you know, a marketing jargon or <laughs> a corporate jargon and, right. you know, use it for uh, seminars, etc. But Bhagavad Gita is indeed a you know sort of a summary of all the Upanishads all the Upanishadic thought you can find in Bhagavad Gita reflected somewhere or the other so that's a beautiful first of all beautiful reel of all the Upanishads you know <laughs> of the long videos you have this one reel beautiful. that you can go through right and in that you see God giving Arjun the choice hmm. he's telling him that Arjun what the behavior you're showing although it feels that you're a very noble person you know, you don't want to hurt your relatives, you don't want to kill your uncles and brothers and cousins and stepbrothers and all that. But on the face of it, it's only on the face of it. Because you are, in fact, a fool. If you believe that you are this body, yeah. that is the hard-hitting truth that Krishna tells him. You are not this body. Think beyond it. And think of your duty, of your dharma. You are a kshatriya. Your dharma is to fight. Similarly, Duryodhan's dharma was also to fight because he was a Kshatriya, even though he was on the bad side. And Duryodhan also reached Swarga. Yeah. Because he performed his dharma. Right. So Krishna says that the performance of your dharma, which is not religion, it is your responsibilities in that stage of life, in that phase of life, in that circumstance of life. What is your responsibility? Are you running from those responsibilities? Or are you fulfilling them? That is what decides whether you'll go to heaven or not. And the fact that, you know, he Krishna tells an Arjun who's ready to leave everything and take a samnyasa, he tells Arjun 
to know go back into the grihast life go back and do his duties perform his duties for the sake of the society and i think you know we were discussing this earlier you know the ideal society if everybody turns spiritual you know whatever it means in modern <laughs> terms everybody wants to become a monk hmm. how will the society function so sanatan dharma has this concept of the varna ashram dharma you know you have four stages of life through which you obtain four purusharths beautiful so the dharma arth kaam and ultimately you get moksha you strive towards moksha whether you get or not is not guaranteed <laughs> but you strive towards moksha but to reach that level you have to go through an initiation you have to go through a training you have to live in the world hmm. you have to see what how the world runs you know just as you know i remember we were discussing earlier that a marketing person has to be sent to the field yes right to understand you know what what it means you know how does the market function what is the dynamics so a person who has not lived in the society who has not contributed to the society who has not participated in the affairs of the society if he decides to leave you know good for him but what is the society what is his contribution to the society that has given him the means to leave the society and go yeah right so that's the beautiful concept of dharma arth kaam which is fulfilled through your brahmacharya grihastha vanaprastha and vanaprastha and in the final stage you strive towards moksha beautiful so i think there's so many examples so many examples which tell you that you know religion does not mean you know leaving everything and you know going to the himalayas and uh, becoming a monk it is about wherever you are fulfilling your responsibilities doing your duty and there are three main uh, debts that we are told mm-hmm. that we have which is called the rin traya which is the three uh, uh, debts which is first is you offer a uh, sacrifice to the gods okay the yagnyas that you we used to do earlier but now uh, at least you worship god and you thank god because gods are tied with us in a symbiotic relationship you know they sustain us and we through our devotion thank them it's a cycle so the first rin that we have to pay the debt we have to pay is to the gods second is to the ancestors the teachers that we had and how do we ensure it by passing on the knowledge that they have given to us and third is to our forefathers by siring children and you know ensuring that the generations continue but all these three are important so passing of this information of this knowledge is one of the three important tasks that we are given beautiful i i think i think lot of things which uh, i heard are like uh, for me it's a reinforcements to for what i learn it uh, from daily and lot of uh, speakers who have actually told exactly similar words because that actually shows dharma is the essence is same right the grihastha ashrama is so important was was told by i think at least four out of 10 speakers i have got to <laughs> because other speakers were we didn't get into the topic right but they emphasized so much on grihastha ashrama so all of you who are learned who are researched the sanatan dharma emphasize more on grihastha ashrama most definitely who will sustain the society see a brahmachari is studying he's a student <laughs> right. right a grihastha is the only four one fourth of society one fourth part of the society i mean just assuming yeah, a assume. simple yeah, division yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. so just one fourth part of the society is what is sustaining the society that's the portion the grihastha or the domestic life uh, uh, who's earning money who's spending that money who's running the economy who's giving donations yeah. if you don't have a grihastha who's pursuing the uh, dharma arth and kaam then you know the society will collapse so it is very important to have you know, and that is why you know the yajman uh, in the older times was considered equivalent to god you know yeah. while performing right. sacrifices so grihast ashram is one of the most contributing ashrams of the society yeah. and it should not be looked down upon never that will be great and when you when you spoke about runatraya so we've been taught by our gurudev uh, mahamuni about the five principles of life so what uh, gurudev actually says is any time any effort any money any wealth you have distribute that into five components 
So when I heard Runatraya, it covers the three of them and he added two of them which is again part of the Upanishads is, you said about uh, the uh, God which we offer, right? And second you talked about Pitrus, basically Pitris right. which are yes. four and things. And third is our family, basically generation yeah. who is coming next. Yeah. Uh, next thing which he adds is the society, yes. right? Around us. Yes. And most important he adds is the self. Yes. So, if these five are taken care in this composition, that is where you grow very, very harmonious in your life. Yes. So imagine if everybody contributes five of them harmoniously yes. and not dedicating only yourself to the only one of them, that is yes. where disease comes. Definitely. So, whenever whenever we get disease, Gurudev keeps on saying, check your portfolio allocation. <laughs> 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 hey, like, like money, he says, where are you spending? Are you spending only on yourself? You're becoming more selfish. Yeah. Oh, you're spending, oh, me and my family, huh? I don't care about society. Yes. Look at the harmony which comes when you say, I'll give equal to five. Definitely. And Gurudev clearly says, look at God, still 20%. Why are you saying people are fanatic? Hmm. So God is in all the five of them. Yes. Then only you will be able to reach God. You can't say, I'll sit in front of idol 24 by 7 and like yes. I want God. So thank you very much for, uh, again, I would say, this is like construction, I would feel, the <laughs> home of dharma which we are building, Mahagate. Each word of every person like you is giving me the brick which is making it so beautiful home. Thank you very much. Again. My pleasure. So, let me come to my favorite uh, person. Okay, I have been lot of times been um, told that you have so much angry, <laughs> anger. So, you are a Vishwamitra, Durvasa and all. I was told from right from childhood. Okay. So, I was very intrigued like, what is this Vishwamitra? Who is this Vishwamitra? And I and have been reading about him, seeing in Ramayana and all. So, I realized that this person has a very ambition to be called as Devarshi, Brahmarshi. Brahmarishi. And he fights for everything. He goes to even Vasishta and to fight with him. And this person is a Kshatriya. And you can't be a Devarshi or Maharshi. Max, you can be a Rajarshi. So, the, I was very, very excited about when you, when I started reading your book. So, can you tell me, why did you start Vishwamitra? First of all, <laughs> amongst all the sages which we have and why, what made you intrigued about Vishwamitra? And, and if you can give me... Sure, sure, sure. Pavanji, actually, I think again, this was, you know, a book that told itself, it wrote itself. I had very little part to play in it because, you know, I, I don't say it, uh, uh, you know, on camera, but uh, I, I actually wrote it in three months, oh. which is too short to write a full book. That's, that's impossible to write a yeah, book. Yeah, but I remember when I started writing, I was just, you know, earlier, I started with a pen and paper, but I realized this is too time consuming and I'm not used to doing it anymore. So I started typing. And since then, I've only been digital. But... Um, I still remember three months dot I finished the book and wow. I sent it to the editor. Wow. So I think what was happening was that the story was so inspiring that, you know, I didn't have to think, I didn't have to even, you know, wait for a day to for inspiration to strike me. Right. Because the story itself was so um, full of twists and turns that could be educational for a lot of people in today's world. And that's what I realized that, you know, I have to tell this story, I have to narrate this story in a way that it would reach out to the urban, modern, uh, English-speaking audience, because it's an English book. Because a lot of people in the villages and in the tier two cities, they know these stories. But we in the cities, we have, we are, we are cut, cut off, you know, from all this education. And um, uh, so the story itself uh, kind of twisted in a way that, you know, showed me how it would be so, uh, it could resonate with an audience of people who are working today, especially the uh, struggle that we face in our lives, you know, in corporate world or otherwise as well, in whatever work you're doing. Yeah. There's a lot of struggle that you face in your personal life, in your professional life. And this, here's this guy who was a Kshatriya, who was a king, who was a warrior. He fought many wars, you know, and he had uh, everything going for him. I mean, what kind of luxury a king does not have, you know? And it, at that stage, when he was at the height, he was at the pinnacle of his achievement, he decided to leave everything. Why? Because he was uh, adamant at becoming better at something else. Ah. He had a run-in with uh, Brahma Rishi Vashisht and 
Because of that, he decided that all this material uh, achievements that I have, they are worthless in front of this man's power. Okay. And I want to beat him. Okay. That is what fueled his journey. So even though the intention was of revenge, uh -huh. in the process, you know, how his personality grows, how he realizes there's so many different facets to himself. And, you know, and he explores them. You know, there's this whole episode of Meenaka being sent by Indra again, you know, to um, basically derail his uh, uh, progress. And a lot of people think it was just a one night stand, right? <laughs> yes. But that's how it is portrayed. It's that, portrayed, you know, Meenaka yeah. comes and she dances in front of Vishwamitra and, uh, you know, his tapasya is broken and, you know, yeah. he, he uh, she seduces him basically. That's it. But... In the scriptures, it's clearly mentioned that they lived together for 10 years. What? Imagine. So, here is... It's not one dance and uh, everything it's not, goes on. It's not, no. So, they lived together for 10 years. Okay. So, there's this man, you know, who's fueled his life on a feeling of revenge and suddenly he finds love. Hmm. How it changes him, you know. Again, after that, when he realizes it was a part of a trick, you know, to <laughs> derail him. And that's exactly what Meneka ended yeah. up doing. So that's when she do he does break off the relationship. But I realized that, you know, and after that, he achieves what he wanted to achieve, what he set out to achieve. And again, he had to forego his, uh, uh, all the yogic merit that he had acquired to help another king. Yeah, I think that's a great story yes. actually. So, so again it goes into the realms of uh, science fiction yeah. but uh, there's a story of a rishi called Trishanku. Yeah. He's called Trishanku because he had three sins okay. and um, he had committed three sins basically. And uh, this king, he wanted, he was Harish, Harish Chandra's father. King Harish Chandra. Oh. A uh, lot of people would have heard of Harish Chandra. Yeah, Harish not, Chandra. Satya yeah. Harish Chandra, who was. Yes, yeah. Satyavadi right. Harish Chandra, right. So, Harish Chandra's father was this king. Okay. And he wanted to go to heaven in his own body. Right. Now, uh, he goes to Vashisht because he's a Suryavanshi, right? Mm. And Vashisht is the family priest. Okay. He's the Kul Guru. Right. So, he goes to Vashisht. Vashisht says, nothing doing. You can't go to heaven in your body. Uh, he goes to Vashisht's sons. They say that you are crazy, that, you know, this can never happen. And he goes to Vish Vishwamitra. He ends up meeting Vishwamitra. He doesn't really go, go to Vishwamitra. But Vishwamitra realizes there's an opportunity mm. to settle a score with Vashesh. To show that Aha. what you or your sons could not do, I can do. Okay. But in that process, he, he takes uh, Trishanku. His, his original name is Satyavrat. So he takes Satyavrat to heaven. But Indra throws him down back. And then, you know, there's a whole episode where Vishwamitra creates a separate universe or separate constellation for him, oh. for Satyavrat to rule. And he's multiplying, he's replicating everything that exists in this world. Okay. And he's making Satyavrat the new Indra of the new realm. Wow. With imagine, all his power. Imagine the kind of power he achieved through his penance. And he's letting go of all that power. The very fact that he used that power means it is gone out of him. Right. So he has to start from scratch again. And he did that. He did that again. My goodness. And that is when ultimately he achieves the Brahma Rishihood. But there's so much struggle in his life, you know, and suddenly he decides this is my goal. He gets distracted and he goes completely on a tangent and then he lands back on the same path and then starts from a scratch and still manages to achieve it. So there's a lot of inspiring acts uh, that I found in his story. And that's why I think, you know, I, 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 as I said, you know, <laughs> the story wrote itself. I, I think I think it is a great character, I would say, I think from listening to this. I, I know about Trishanku Swarga, but I never knew he was Harishchandra's father. Yes. But um, the kind of, you know, uh, perseverance he had yes. might be for an ego, I agree. But I think he realizes later that it yes. is... It is for a reason why he wanted to become a Brahmarshi yes. and I think great stuff. And it is Vishwamitra who actually discovered the Gayatri Mantra. Yeah. So a lot of people don't realize that, you know, and the Gayatri Mantra comes from the Rig Veda. And Vedas again, because we were discussing earlier, so just to highlight that Vedas are not written by one person. They're mm. not written by Vedvyas. They were compiled by Vedvyas. They were hymns or verses or prayers that were seen in visions by different rishis, different rishi families. Hmm. And they were put together okay. as a collection. 
So the Gayatri mantra from the Rig Veda, the author of the mantra is Vishwamitra. Oh. If you read the Anukramanika. Okay. So Vishwamitra is the one who discovered it and he brought it out for the world. And we pray so much to Gayatri Mantra and we are not giving the credit to the author. To, to the author, <laughs> exactly, exactly. I think, I think these are things which we need to know to the greatness of sages. So a lot of people actually literally go to prove that this is the best thing, but we also need to know the source. Yes. And, and as you rightly put uh, that Veda Vyasa only compiled yes. and they say that they only had, he had only fistful of things which he had to put in because he says this itself is too much for yes. Kali Yuga, for Kali Yuga it's coming yes. in. So yeah, I think with the 30 second or a one minute reel, I think we can't <laughs> take that mutti bar also. Yeah. Coming back to Vishwamitra, if you can give me one thing which a person like me should do, learn and one thing I should stop because this is how it is, if you can just give me. So I think the biggest lesson from his life, one is perseverance, you mm. know, as you said, you, if you have a goal, you better work for it. By hook or by crook, you know, whatever time it takes, however many man hours it takes to achieve that goal, you have to do it. That is the biggest thing that you can learn from him. And second is not, the, the thing that you should not do, again, which he showed through various examples is, not to give in to your baser instincts. Okay. Not to give in to lust, not to give in to desire, not to give in to jealousy. Hmm. Jealousy. You know, so jealousy did trigger him on this path. But? But, you know, ultimately he had to forego of jealousy. Only then he could become a Brahmarishi. So the jealousy element that a lot of envy, a lot of people have. Yeah. And we don't even realize it. Yeah. You know, and when we see someone doing good or doing well in life, Somewhere in the back of the mind, there's a voice, hmm, okay, I could have done better, you know, <laughs> or something to that effect that, you know, how could he do it or how could she do it, you know, uh, maybe they had different circumstances, maybe they had better opportunities. Yeah. I could have done better if I had also the same opportunities. Things like that do come to our mind. So that envy, you have to get out of your mind and focus, you have to get into your mind. I think that's what Vishwamitra's life teaches us. Beautiful. I mean, he, he, He's the only person, uh, except for Brahma, who is credited with creating a world. World, <laughs> yeah. That's mind-blowing. And yeah. he's a human. Human, yeah. So, I mean, imagine what all we can achieve. Great, great learning. So, on that jealousy part, um, Gurudev also always talks about Brahma Viharas. Though I know it is uh, not credited to Sanatan Dharma, which we would like to clarify here <laughs> very clearly. It is from Sanatan Dharma Upanishads. So, Mudita where you are very happy for somebody else's success. Right. I think that is something which he was missing. I think that's yes. a learning which uh, you're giving. Thank you very much. I think that's about uh, Ishwamitra. Coming to the most favorite character again. I, I keep saying most because every <laughs> character is, I think, gem. But somehow, uh, I think I'm very glad and blessed to be with you because you wrote about two persons who are well known, but in a different way. Like everybody knows Parashurama came to Rama and broke, he was very angry when the bow was uh, you broken. Know, broken. Yeah. He started shouting at him and then he went back and went. That is only Parashurama people know <laughs> or other way. Yeah. He put an axe and killed thousands of yes. kings. Why? Nobody knows. Yes. Probably something he don't know. What happened after that? No idea. Yeah. So they only know this character as these two instances. Yes. So I would like you to, uh, since you have written a great book and uh, I'm sure everybody should read that book multiple times. But if you can give us, what is this Parashurama all about? And Avatara, which you look at it. We, yes. And I'll ask more questions on Parashurama because I'm very <laughs> intrigued by a few things on him. Sure. But if you can give us a chronology of Parashurama. Again, yeah, right. So Pavanji, uh, again, a lot of people don't know that Vishwamitra and Parashurama, they are related. Ah. So, okay. <laughs> that is the reason I picked up Parshurama for my second book. Okay. And they were born of the same boon. Mm -hmm. There was a divine portion that was prepared by a rishi called Ruchik. And it was shared equally between two women who happened to exchange them, ah. which resulted in exchanging the destinies of the children. Okay. That is the premise, you okay. know, with which both of them are born. Okay. So Vishwamitra, he was born a Kshatriya with the uh, inherent tendencies of a Brahmin, hmm. of a scholar. scholar, and that is why he went on that pursuit. 
and Parshurama, he was born a Brahmin, the son of a Brahmin, but with the tendency of a Kshatriya or a warrior. Warrior, okay. Again, a lot of people will go into the caste, but it's not about caste. We're talking only about the vocation or the work you're doing. So, Vishwamitra was a Kshatriya because he was a king, he was a warrior. That's what Kshatriyas are supposed to do. And when he became a Brahmarishi, that is because he started reading scriptures and he started propounding scriptures. So, he became a Brahmin. Whereas the other opposite happened with Parshurama. So, a lot of people know that he was a violent avatar. He killed, you know, Kshatriyas 21 times uh, and, you know, wiped off their race from earth, etc., etc. Circumstances that led him to do it are the focus of my book. Hmm. Where, you know, everybody knows he did it, but why? There's a very simple story which was given, which I don't believe is the only reason why things happened. Because when you read the Puranas, you read there is there are multiple incidents right. where these groups were in skirmish. Hmm. You know, there were fights happening between uh, the Hayahaya Yadavas, uh, of which Kartivirya Arjun was the leader, even before him and even after him. So they were in loggerheads with the Brahmins of the region. Okay. Because of, you know, material uh, reasons, primarily because of material uh, gains. You know, Brahmins had been given a lot of donation. There are stories like that, you know, where by previous kings. And when the kings lost everything, they went to the Brahmins to ask for it. They refused that this was given to us as a dan. So we have to use it for this purpose, not for your warfare and all that. That led to a tussle again. So there are multiple stories. Right. There are stories where, you know, uh, a species, uh, th there was a whole... Um, pogrom, you know, of uh, devastation that was uh, uh, meted out to a particular set of people. And, you know, there's a Rishi that was born out of it, uh, who cursed that, you know, all this uh, race will perish and all yeah. that. So there's various stories that tell us that they were definitely, uh, you know, they were not on friendly terms. Right, understood. So in the background of that, you know, I had to recreate what was the political scenario of India. Wow. And what was the political landscape of India that time? What were the other dynasties that were ruling? You know, we know there was, and this is because um, the next generation after Vishwamitra. So we know that uh, Dushyant and Shakuntala would have been there. You know, Maharaj Bharat would be born. Parshuram is uh, growing up in that scenario where Harish Chandra's father has gone to heaven. Right. Now Harish Chandra is ruling. Right. So what would have been happening in Ayodhya at that time? Wow. What was happening in Kannauj, in Kanyakobj, where you know Vishwamitra was? Uh, what was happening in Mahishmati, hmm. where Kartavirya Arjun lived? So all these places, you know, have kind of tied up uh, in a in a narrative to show what was the reason, what led to him, and to top it all, there's another element in the picture that people miss in Parshuram's story. Kartivirya Arjun, who is the antagonist in uh, Parshuram's story, he is one of the only three people who defeated Ravan. Oh. So the fact that Parshuram kills Kartivirya Arjun okay. means that his defeat, Kartivirya's defeat of Ravan happened before. Right. So Ravan was already existing oh, okay. at that time okay. when Parshuram was here. Okay. So what role could he have played? Hmm. That is also an element I've explored in my book. Because he was definitely there. Multiple Purans mention that Kartavirya Arjun defeats Ravan. Uh, Ravan. Even Valmiki Raman, the Uttar Khan actually mentions the story. Okay. So, uh, Ravan was defeated only by three people. One is Kartavirya Arjun, second is of course Ramji, and third is uh, Wali. Wali, yeah, yeah. Wali, Wali. I, I, have, yeah. I have recently came to know about right. Wali. So, only three people. Yeah. So, uh, that was a fascination for me that, you know, this was very uh, unlike what I had written for Vishwamitra, where he was fighting his circumstances to choose what he wanted. Huh. You know, he was braving all the... Uh, uh, everything that uh, Indra had to throw in him or the circumstances he had to throw in him or opportunities through which he, uh, he let his powers go waste. But Parshuram, on the other hand, he was forced by the circumstances to go on a certain path to avenge and to cleanse the world, basically, of the corrupt rulers. It's not about a caste. It's about the ruling class. Whoever was there, and because of the corruption, because of the tyranny, they had to be removed. Okay. And he also resulted in creating new kings. Hmm. So there were new Kshatriyas that were created out of the other Varnas. He created uh, yes, the yes. kings. He made, he made new kings. You know, there's ah. the, He made new Brahmins. Okay. From, you know, there's many stories in Maharashtra 
about you know how a certain sect of brahmins were created by uh, parshuram sure. and all that and the entire uh, eastern coast of india is credited to parshuram you know people say kerala uh, people in goa say goa was created but no it's the entire konkan region you know okay. the, beyond the uh, eastern ghats whatever land exists that is credited to have been created by parshuram so he is not only annihilating but he was also creating the he whole was, new system so he actually he rejuvenated the system systems, totally completely completely yeah. he was he shook up the foundations of the system excellent and he created new systems you know so that from 19th yuga 19th cycle to 24th when uh, shri rama came so for all this time he was the in charge ah he okay. was handling things so he was the avatar for that long yes okay. yes yes and he's still there he's supposed to teach kalki okay so, so he's uh, the chiranjeevi one of the seven yes, chiranjeevis one of the chiranjeevis i'm not wrong yes yeah wonderful so when we talk about avatars we know krishna bhagwan is like very famous because he is very latest probably yeah and ram jam ji to hum log pooch karte hain narsimha avatar is again very famous yes amongst the 10 avatars if you look at it these are the three major people actually very much worship right we don't see matsya kurma being vamana also very less yes parshurama has very less temples i, I think i have not <laughs> i know that there are two temples as i know in india but why is he not worshiped is this because any reason or is possibly it possibly because of the violence associated with him and people don't understand you know mm. in konkan uh, area uh, in maharashtra you do have a lot of temples of parshurama sure. you you do have temples um at some other places uh, in the country as well you know in arunachal there is a parshurama kund where he supposed to have washed his axe and uh, you know so in himachal there is a temple but um primarily yes you would see rama and krishna being worshiped more uh, rather than parshurama i think i feel it's probably because of violence and people don't understand why he was so violent correct so and that was the whole purpose of writing the book that you know everybody knows what he did but why he did or why he had to yeah. do that you know that is what i was exploring beautiful i think i think we need to tell people about the greatness of the avatar right. if rama is seen only as a person who left his wife yeah <laughs> i think we, are, we wouldn't have been worshiping him so much yes right how much ever true or whatever it is i'm not even getting there but even if you look at the character of rama has been so well explained by valmiki probably we are missing a valmiki to parashurama yes <laughs> very true very true yeah. you know we, we know ayodhya you know is the birthplace of yeah. shri rama or mathura for krishna correct but you know 90% people who don't know where was parashuram where was born. parashurama So, yeah, like i think vyasa and valmiki are the reasons why we have these two great yes, itihasas that's true i that's think we true. are missing the those valmiki yes. and vyasas i would say modern valmiki vyasas you are because you are telling <laughs> no, we people we are nothing nothing in front of them. no but for kali yuga for this night 2024 i would still say because you are the persons who are at least giving the interest in these people so i i'm very blessed to have done podcast with many of the authors like you who have come and started talking about these great people i think it's a blessing because i am talking to the modern vyasas that's what i would say <laughs> <laughs> you might say uh, with your whole humility we can say no you are no, not no, no, genuinely we are nothing compared to what they have achieved but yes we are working in that direction i think it's it's just about sharing whatever you know i think only then the knowledge can spread great so. i think because chris so one controversial question about parashurama okay. the most uh, famous mr karna <laughs> our our famous person in mahabharata who who thinks he is very very smart is it right by parashurama that he has cursed him is did it happen the curse or was it right what do you, what is your opinion of course of course see if you if you go through the critical edition you know you you see there are certain instances that have been mentioned that did happen it does not mean that the uh, incidents mentioned in the other versions did not happen but we can't be sure sure but this incident did happen right okay. so now but if you read the mahabharat that is when you realize that it had nothing to do with caste it had nothing to do with uh, you know uh, who karna was what his birth was and parshuram was an avatar you know he would anyways know that he is not uh, who he is pretending to be right he was just testing karna hmm and you know the anger that parshurama felt with karna was because of his lies ha ah. i think it is a, it is regarding the character hmm 
and in those days if you see you know the the gurus did not teach a student any student right they'll test you whether you are worthy of this knowledge or not right and this this is how it should be even in schools today we have an eligibility test yeah, right, yeah. for the children yeah, yeah, yeah. The entrance test for everything <laughs> yeah. yeah so so why should it be any different so parshurama was given a picture uh, by karn of him being someone or something or a personality that he wasn't correct and that is what angered him it was not that you know he should have been happy oh you uh, let a insect bite you you know had i been in his place i would have been like wow you did so much for me <laughs> yeah. you know whereas parshuram's ang- anger was completely unjustified to me as a child yeah when i heard that story of the child, i was like why is he angry you know he Karn, saved karna yeah. actually saved him from that insect right. bite you know and he did not let him wake up but his anger stems from this fact that he knew at some level that there is something which you know this, this guy kid, is not what he is yeah. yeah and that is when it came to light and that is why he cursed him that you know you have learned this vidya from me by using lies mm. that is why it will leave you when you need it the most it was not about anything else i think when you are telling about entrance test and all i was just imagining if a doctor writes a mbbs exam with a fake certificate of 10th <laughs> class or a fake certificate and he's practicing now if somebody comes and takes away his license would you be as a public who's listening to it what they will say oh acha doctor tha exactly. will they agree no then uh, everybody will say that yes you yeah, know you it, should it take should have away. been taken away <laughs> so that's that's exactly what it is it's just that you know i think it's kaliyug so a lot of things mm. are very narratives are built yes a lot of these narratives are built to pitch the villains as heroes hmm. and to bring down the heroes just as you know all the propaganda that happens around uh, shri ram you know yeah. so it is just a effort which for the longest time was very effective you know and now it's only now that it is being countered by people who are reading the scriptures yeah. and who are voicing out their opinion so i i think again uh, people should read the scriptures without going by what the serials show <laughs> or what the movies show this been umpteen number of serials and movies yeah. on karna so you know showing him as a very tragic hero which he wasn't he was if if you read the mahabharat you'll know he wasn't i was telling like in one of the podcast i was i started reading critical version of mahabharat 10 volumes i read till 4 i just came to udyoga parva not even kurukshetra i generally don't hate people because <laughs> not required why do you have to hate you don't like it still okay yeah. but i started hating this guy and i'm like i know he was not great fellow he yeah. you know but somehow that thing comes in whenever there is a thing going on good in mahabharat yeah. he comes enters yes. there enters karna and it spoils yes i think kurukshetra war we should give it to him <laughs> that credit goes to him. great thank you i think the parshurama is is really a great avatar and and i would love to see a person writing lot about parshuramas and we people actually have to do more research where he was born how did he do and somehow we have uh, lakshmi devi coming with everybody but parshurama i i didn't see any no. uh, so i actually did that research about his birthplace uh-huh. i went to his birthplace it's an mp oh it's was it called, wow. it's, it's a small uh, hamlet on top of a hill it's called oh, that's all it's called janapav Okay. and there's a new temple that just opened last year excellent there. so it's it's about 40 kilometers from indore ah, so i'm very happy to hear this <laughs> yes so you should definitely visit but also um his as you said you know uh, all the avatars had lakshmi in one form or the other so in a list of um, uh, incarnations you know it is mentioned as dharini his counterpart but there is no story of him ever having got oh, married okay. or having a family so dharini actually it suggests you know dhara ah, which is earth which is earth yeah so, so he saved earth because he saved the earth so possibly that is why you know it is mentioned but that's the only place where you find one name otherwise nowhere else uh, he's mentioned to ever have uh, even you know tried okay to get into a relationship because he had a very different lifestyle yeah, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> well i think we 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 should have more research i think that's what i would say be it in ayurveda be it in uh, veda or be it in Up- upanishads 
beat in parshuram story yeah. <laughs> i think we should have more and more people writing about it you are an inspiration for people <laughs> like new authors who are going to write it so i think it will be great okay time for the rapid fire questions <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so this is something segment which uh, most of our people if we go back to our analytics on youtube this is where people skip to okay <laughs> even if they put 1.5 here they put 1x and say let me listen what rapid fire it was okay. because i'm sure we had some preparation on questions we talk about at least the structure but these are not questions we don't give it to you anybody right and these are written like on the spot in the morning okay <laughs> so i get up in the morning before the podcast i just pray to the god and just write it right. so it's like very flat and you can answer it in one few questions sure and uh, one good thing which we give because it's dharma you can say pass i don't want to answer okay okay <laughs> shall we start